Hey guys, welcome to your first vodcast for World War II. This should take about 10 minutes. And in this session, you're going to learn a little bit about the, the people in charge in Europe uh, at the time of the start of the war in Europe. The United States doesn't get involved until uh, 1941, but things were going on a long time before that. So let's just take a look at some of this stuff. Over the course of several years, from 1931 to 1945, many European and Asian countries were attacked and taken over by Germany and Japan in their attempts to dominate the Eastern Hemisphere. Japan focused on the mineral-rich China and the United States at Pearl Harbor. There's a map of Pearl Harbor and Pearl Harbor is on the island of Oahu. Uh, here is a map or a schematic if you will of the Japanese plans for attack of Pearl Harbor. You can see when they leave Japan and each date where they record their position. They fly in and here's where the planes are uh, take off and then the plan well it, I guess it was successful was to return here and back to Japan you can even see where they have tracked the mo movement of our carriers well, once they dropped their carriers or excuse me once the carriers were able to th get the planes off the planes knew they weren't coming back they just couldn't make it some some made it back but most of them uh, were, were unable to do so um, Japan had a lot of spies in the country and they took very very specific detailed photos and sent a lot of information back to Japan in preparation for this attack so they knew what ships were in port and which ships were out and then here are here's the waves you can see the first waves at 750 coming around on the, uh, the eastern side of the island hitting, uh, hitting Pearl Harbor and other Air Force fields and then the other wave at 850 Germany, on the other hand, attacked many more countries in Europe through Hitler's attempt to conquer the world. It began with neighboring countries of Czechoslovakia and Austria, then moved west to Norway, Belgium, France, and then attempted to uh, take over England, uh, but failed. Following that, Hitler returned east in his attempts to dominate Poland, Yugoslavia, Greece, Albania, and then finally attempted to take Moscow, but there also he failed. Italy was part of the Axis movement to dominate the world. In Italy, the rebels marched on Rome. Uh, the country was facing political unrest, hard times, and unemployment situations very similar to the United States during the Great Depression. Like Americans, Italians had two choices, solve the problems in a free diplomatic way or let someone else solve the problems for them. Unlike America, Italy chose to let someone solve the problems for them. Their new leader, Benito Mussolini, promised change and prosperity, but only had plans to eventually betray the people. The new leader of Germany, Adolf Hitler, had the same following and support as Mussolini, if not more so. Germany, Germany was also in a very poor state following World War I. Remember, they had to pay something like $300 billion in war damages. Hitler made it very clear that, Germany, that the German army and the people of Germany never admitted defeat. They never signed the Treaty of Versailles. He promised revenge and vowed to protect the uh, property of Germany and the wealth of Germany. And here you see a picture uh, following World War I. The money, the marks in Germany were printed at such a rate that everybody had anything they wanted to and this guy has so much that he's wallpapering his house with it. We call that severe inflation. Through Hitler's promises, people are convinced of his intentions, but in the end, he only pits one side against the other, the wealthy versus the poor. Japan was slowly becoming industrialized and saw weak China as the perfect store for raw materials. Unlike Germany and Italy, Japan was taken over by a group of, group of men with military power. The head of the country was the emperor. Uh, they called him the God King, and here you see a picture of him. That's Hirohito. But... The military was under the command of General Tojo. He was in charge of day-to-day -day operations. All, these mem all members of these three societies gave up the rights to follow their new leaders. All areas gained new leaders, new uniforms, and a new movement. In Germany, the new movement was called National Socialism, or Nazism. In Italy, the black shirts followed the theory of fascism, where a dictator rules the country. And in Japan, 
The new movement was called the New Era of Enlightenment, or the New Order in Asia. All in all, it was a militaristic imperialism that drove these three governments to act as they did. In all three countries, the existing governments willi willingly gave up power to their new leaders and gave up rights such as free speech, free assembly, and free press. Hitler is well known for his book burning, burning anything that did not follow his train of thought or in his uh, leadership. The final obstacle in all three countries, now that the people and the government had handed over their consent to be ruled, was the church. The main objectives of the new dictators was to teach children that their new state is their church and their new leader is their God. Here's a scene from a German elementary school. And Japan taught their children math, reading, and how to shoot someone. At home, the citizens of the United States enjoyed peace. Two treaties had been signed, which ultimately put the risk, United States at risk. The first treaty reduced the size of our Navy around the world. A part of that treaty promised that we would guarantee the integrity of China. Basically, we will do what we can to protect the people and the government of China. The second treaty, known as the Kellogg-Briand Pact, disallowed countries to declare war as a means to settle disputes. This was signed following World War I. Most of the Americans at the time believed that neutrality or isolation was the best policy. People wanted to fall back into our old isolated world after World War I. What they did not realize is that this world would never again be a possibility. There was a there was a contrast to reality. While Americans played, Germany, Japan, and Italy all prepared for war. And yes, even the Japanese ladies get involved in the action. Germany and Japan and Italy all claim land as part of their imperialistic plans. They wanted to carve out the Eastern Hemisphere. At the same time, all three countries coveted the lands of each other. It's difficult to say, but if those three, if the Axis powers had won World War II, uh, there are some historians who believe that Hitler was going to go after uh, Italy next and conquer him and remove Mussolini from power and then take everything, Hitler would then take everything that he has and go after Japan because that was his next biggest uh, opponent should he conquer the world. They all used the excuse that land and raw materials were needed for survival. Japan was the first to act on these imperialistic tendencies when it began full aggressions in September of 1931 in Manchuria. Shortly after that success in Manchuria, the Japanese moved on and attacked the city of Shanghai. Italy began its aggressions in October of 1935 when it attacked Ethiopia, and Mussolini pounds his chest as he declares a huge victory for the Italian army as his tanks and airplanes and machine guns defeat a bunch of tribal warriors with spears and uh, shields made out of wood. So that concludes the uh, the first podcast. Again, just a very brief introduction, and um, there will be a quiz later on. Not nothing too major, uh, so don't freak out. You might want to watch this a couple of times. Um, take some notes if you want to. But everything from the quiz or on the quiz, excuse me, will be taken from these podcasts. I might combine two or three quizzes together, or excuse me, two or three podcasts together to generate enough questions for one. But anyhow, uh, again, watch as many times as you want to, and uh, hopefully you're enjoying things in class as they are going today.